Hi there. Uh, today we're going to be painting this basket of fruit. And here's the pencil drawing. And we'll get right into it. Um, I'm using a wash of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. A little more on the ultramarine blue side at this point, but I'm trying just to get a neutral gray. Um, you could use uh, Payne's gray if you'd like, um, because we will be doing a second wash later on in the painting. Um, now what I like to do is, now this <laughs> this video is sped up quite a bit. It's about quarter time, so uh, I don't really paint that fast. But you should try to paint as fast as you possibly can because what you want to do is you don't want to have like stop and stop marks. Um, for you beginners, it's when you don't mix enough paint in your palette to cover the areas that you want to cover. When you have to go back and remix, and uh, by that time, the first layer, or the, I should say the first wash, has dried up. So try to um, make as much paint as possible, especially when we're working large. Uh, this painting is about tw uh, 9 by 12. So it's not huge, but it's not small either. So you want to try to mix enough paint that will cover. All right. Uh, always make more than when you need. Um, okay, so here I am. I'm adding. This is a, a uh, actually a phthalo blue um, with ultramarine blue, um, and a slight touch of burnt umber just to kind of calm it down. When I say calm it down, I just mean neutralizing the color. And what does neutralizing mean? It just means you don't want the colors to be so bright. Sometimes uh, colors that are in the shadow tend to be a little subdued. Um, and not full chroma or intensity, which means like full strength of the color. Usually, you know, it's the shadows kind of um, soften and again neutralize the colors. So here I'm adding what will be at the end of the painting the light hitting um, the sides of the basket and through the basket, parts that we don't really see. Um, the reason for this is because we work from light to dark, so we can put our light colors in first. Um, as long as you you know you have an idea of where they're going to be going, how light they need to be in the beginning. Um, here it was just an, an observation. Always look at your subject um, and try to understand every nuance of what's happening, any little gradation, any little color change, um, because that's going to help you tremendously when you start to paint. Now, uh, if you recall the photograph, uh, you can see that on the right and left side, um, some things happen. They get a little brighter. And why do they get brighter? Well, if we look at the picture, just actually we look at what we're painting here now, you can see the two flanking sides that have a lot of light. They just bathe in light. This uh, basket was on my windowsill in my studio, and the sun was just pouring through, and I thought it was... Uh, I love the glow on the fruit, and I think the fruit are even plastic because they're still there. So, But what's happening is that light is shining back into the uh, basket, which is causing basically fill light from both sides. One light is a little cool, one light is a little warm or more red. So why does that happen? Well, <clears throat> it could mean that um, the side of the basket on the left might have been closer to the side wall plane, you know, um, because it, it's just a window, kind of like a window box. So that could have bought color back in in a different way. It's really you know, how can we understand? I mean, we can we can really evaluate it and, and break it down, but it's what we visually see that's most important. So I can go on all day about how these light infractions happen, but it's really just looking, okay, and seeing what's going on and responding to those color shifts. Um, that's what makes a good painting, whether it's watercolor, oil, or pastel, any medium. Um, it's how that color is perceived um, and then reproduced. So now, 
uh, I'm adding some accents. I'm going back to the same wash to get that darker thalo blue. Thalo blue is kind of like a royal blue. If you don't have thalo blue, Prussian blue would be good in moderation. You may have to use a bit more water with uh, Prussian blue because it's, it's darker in value, um, just out of the tube. Um, so now you're seeing, we're starting to get the feeling of light and shade on this thing. So, um, but it's a building up process. You'll see that I use my blow dryer constantly, especially when I'm doing a demonstration where I want to dry certain areas to go back in and reapply a new wash. Um, sometimes you could just, if you have the time, if you're not really in any rush, then by all means, let it just dry. Um, some students ask me, what's the difference between drying, or is there a difference between uh, or how the colors react when you dry it with a blow dryer versus drying it or just air drying, just letting it sit for a while. Well, there's really not much difference. Um, the colors still get lighter, which is the characteristic of watercolor. They have a tendency to... Uh, just get sunken in. So when you put your colors down, don't be afraid when you put your color down that looks it looks a little too dark or a little too chromatic because when it dries, um, the general rule is about 20% lighter than what how you apply the paint. So be careful of that. And um, because if it looks right, when you put it first put it down it's gonna dry lighter especially you have a little you have a little grace and leeway in the sky sometimes people like to have like a brighter sky it gives it gives the uh, it's the touch tone for the rest of the painting which is fine and um, but if you if you want to get a really uh, rich luxurious blue sky or something with deep clouds or something, you really have to get that depth. Um, so, yeah, so now what I'm doing here, um, and let me just go over to something too, because, uh, so the color, you probably wonder, well, what's the color that I'm using for the basket? Yes, I'm using, you know, you can tell that it's a, it's a, well, it's, it's a reddish color that's in the shadow so what it is alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and a little burnt umber and a bit of a cadmium red what i'm painting right now is a cadmium red i'm adding more cadmium red to this mixture because it just needs a little bit more vibrancy so um don't be afraid to jump in with different color okay if you see that there's some blue reflecting in the basket by all means, uh, paint it in. Um, what I did just before was uh, I had a scrubber brush, and I just wanted to emphasize those lights that are kind of shimmering through the basket. Right, we're seeing kind of in between the um, the the, uh, the wicker there. Okay, so um, be mindful of those things. Right, you want to have like an equal distribution. You want the shapes. Again, really ob observe those shapes um, because when you're working in this looser style, um, if you can grasp and render the shape without rendering it too much, um, it's really all you need. The eye doesn't really need to see every little nook and cranny um, with this technique, mind you. Um, if you want to work a little more a slower and deliberate, Absolutely. Go slower, keep your washes very thin, and keep building them up. Watercolor is pretty resilient. It takes, um, and depending on the paper that you use, mind you, I try not to use cheap paper. Uh, what's cheap paper? Well, most of uh, anything, I use uh, Archer's. Um, I think that that's the best. Water, Saunders Waterford paper is excellent, too. Um but those two are probably, personally, the ones I use. They can take a lot of washes, and that's what you want. Cheaper paper, uh, the minute you put too many washes, the paper doesn't uh, react that well. And what happens is um, you actually start moving paint around 
where you're not supposed to be. Like the the subsequent washes become uh, are actually lifting the previous layers up. You don't want that. So archers, I like I like cold press, forty pound. You could use three hundred pound, which is nice too. Uh, it's just a thicker paper. Um, all right, so let's get back into the fruit. All right, so what did I use for the orange? Well, I used orange, cadmium orange, and burnt sienna, and a little bit of uh, cadmium red on the orange. And again, as we put the paint down, the more, um, if I hadn't mentioned this before, as the more water we use, the lighter our washes are gonna be. The less water we use, the more intense our color is going to be. So after a while, after, you know, if you're a beginner, try to just take one sheet of paper. I know that some of this paper is quite expensive, but um, take, take some paper because you really have to know and feel it out. Feel what those colors are going to do and see what, it, what it's like to put down the paint, see how it dries, see how it reacts to more water, less water. Um, and then, you know, working what we're doing right now, doing, you know, experiment into wet into wet. Now what's happening here, I have the painting on a, it's about a 30 degree angle, okay, um, which is a good way to do a watercolor. However, when you start to model shapes, um, you may have to flatten out your, um, your artwork, which I had to do, and you'll see that a little later in the video, where it looks like the picture changes slightly. Well, that's because I had to lay it down flat on my on my table here. Um, I don't work on an easel. I usually just work um, with a whether I'm working on a block, I'll just hand hold it. Um, if I have to move the paint around or the washes to get them to go where I want them to go. So I want that ability to do that um, in, in my painting. I don't want to be uh, stuck. Um, now, as you can see, the pear, which was quite red, um, I'm adding, I dried it, and now I'm adding another wash, and I'm working wet into wet. Actually, it's, it's wet into dry, but I, I'm working so fast to put the washes down that it becomes quickly went into wet, which is fine. That's how, uh, that's how you actually model in watercolor. Um, you have to continue to do your washes, get them a little richer, darker. Um, when you get really good, you can probably do this all in one step, but you have to really know what the colors are gonna do. And some, some artists can do that. I can't, I usually have to go back and, 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 and get them a little richer, but I try to limit my washes to three, no more than three washes. If three, if I go three washes um, on my painting, uh, it's gonna start to look really overdone um, and, and overworked. So try to set yourself up so your first washes are substantial. You know, get, get enough paint down, get enough uh, pigment uh, to water ratio down at first. And after a while, you'll you'll feel it. You'll, it's actually a feeling thing. You say, "Oh man, that's a little wimpy wash." You know, you'll know, you know, after you put it down to just add a little bit more pigment to that wash. And when you think you've gone dark enough, go darker, okay? Because that's like the, again another general rule when we're working in watercolor. All right. So now what I'm trying to do is just trying to get a little bit more form, a little bit more color on the fruit. Um, that's a little scrub brush. I'm trying to get a little softer edge. Um, nothing wrong with scrubbing. Okay, so now, uh, I, what I mentioned earlier, I'm going back. I already put a second layer on the background, okay? Um, you could do this wet into wet, but be careful. Um, you have to work around, you still have to work around the fruit. Um, so now I can tell by adding that darker background, now my, my, the painting has to be altered a bit, so, which means it has to come down in value. All right, so you'll see that the pear, now that it's flat, uh, my washes are not going to run as they were before. If you've noticed, they were kind of dripping downward. 
Now they're not. Now they're just sitting in little puddles, which is great for what, uh, what I'm about to do. You want to render on a flat surface if you need to. Um, you get much more control. So, uh, so that's why if I wasn't doing a, a video, I probably would have just collapsed my, um, my table down to just a regular flat surface rather than a 30 a 30 degree uh, surface. All right, so now I'm adding some greens into the pair. Um, I, I noticed that the uh, that the shadows also on the basket need to come down, and I'll probably be painting that in. Now, what I'm doing with the white, if I haven't mentioned it before, um, I am using a little bit of white, um, and that's the Pro White or the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, excuse me. And that stuff is great. Now what it does is, um, if let's say you can't isolate a white and you don't want to use masking fluid, this is the next best thing because you do get a little bit of a, if you put a little wash, if you lay down the white and then you go over it or just touch it from one side, you'll see that there's a little bit of a, uh, kind of like a glow happening. What's happening is the water is actually, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the water is interacting with the bleed proof paint and I believe it's going to happen right now. There you go. You see that? Um, what I did was I just went around and now I have a little glow on, I believe that's a pear. And um, so you can see those little accents really go a long way because I wanted my painting to look as close to my reference picture as possible. Um, and try to do your own pictures, you know, try to take pictures, you know, near windows. Watercolor works best with, I feel, with a lot of light, you know, a lot of just flushing in light, just washes of light. Um, not to say that you can't do a watercolor of a gray day, but, uh, uh, which you can. Um, I, I just find it it's, it's beautiful because you have that white of the paper that just gives you that transparency. All right, so now, yep, I have to go darker. Now, now this wash, and you'll see what happens here. That as dark as that looks, okay, um, I'm just softening my edge with a little paper towel there. You'll see how right before your eyes, how light that's going to become. So you can see. Before it was probably what it's probably about a half a value um, lighter than it was when we when we put the uh, uh, wash down. All right, so now the shadows they're going to need to be darker too. So we really want now this is probably my la my third and last wash I believe. Um, and again, I limit myself to three washes. If I can't do it in three washes, I better take up golf. Um, and I think what's what'll happen is you guys as students, you'll see you'll see what I mean as you as you gain more experience with this medium, that it can become amazing. I love going outside and doing plain air paintings. It's so immediate. Um, that uh, and and plus it's you know it's it's better for the environment. It's just water. Um, you don't have to schlep around turpentine. All you need is a bottle of water. And here it is. I'm taking away the, uh, the tape, and there you go. So this is the painting in its entirety. I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.